Hey everyone, Nate from Connected here. In my last update around the new year, I told you that I was moving to Florida. Well, here I am in sunny Florida and we're setting up shop inventory. Some pieces of inventory are starting to come in. Uh, so it's really exciting and I'm, I'm looking forward to a great new year with Connected and working with all of you guys. But what I really wanted to show you today <coughs> is I've got brand new samples of our um, production boards in for Macrofab and I wanted to give you a closer look at some of the tweaks and improvements that we've made to the hardware and these are in production right now. So let's take a look. Now I know you've all seen my previous videos on Kickstarter and my installation videos as I showed you how to install the connected alarm panel. It doesn't look too much different but we've made a few improvements based on your feedback during the Kickstarter campaign that I want to show you right now. And right now you're looking at one of our latest prototypes and as you can see a few noticeable differences that you can see right off the bat is that the logo, the connected logo is really big and beautiful and if I kind of twist like that you can see it's um, it's actually showing the the copper from the the circuit board inside there so that looks really really nice. Uh, I thought that was a great branding touch. Um, the boards themselves are the same size as the prototypes that I've showed you before and pretty much the same layout. I've moved up the screw terminals just a little bit and that way we were able to print the labeling for the screw terminals down below. It was a little bit difficult to see the labels on the screw terminals when they were above the screw terminals themselves so we fixed that by just adjusting the layout of the board just a little bit. And now also the most exciting update is now there are actually two variations of the connected board. Now I know these look almost identical, but they're actually slightly different. This one is the connected alarm panel board, main board, which has an output for a 12 volt siren. However, this board has 12 volt output to power your um, aux powered devices, but instead of a switch for a siren, it has these output pins for a low voltage switch. Now why did I do it this way? The reason is, is because most homes, most alarm systems only have one siren. So it didn't make a lot of sense to have a siren switch on each board, especially if you have a larger installation like a 12 or an 18 zone kit, which have several boards, because you would only be able to use one siren. So I came up with this design so that you can do a little bit more with your connected alarm panel, including attaching a PZO buzzer, a relay, or any number of devices that you can switch. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here in just a minute. You'll notice one other improvement, as soon as I plug it in, is there's a green power indicator light. Uh, and this, a few of you had mentioned this, that you couldn't tell whether it was powered, was on or off. So we added that green power indicator so it's easy for you to see. The connected system is actually, as you know, two pieces of hardware the connected alarm panel board, which is our custom hardware that I've designed, and the Node MCU Wi-Fi module that contains the Wi-Fi chip and all the, the brains of the system live on this board. And now when you buy this from us, um, the Wi-Fi module is preloaded with connected firmware and software, so all you have to do is plug it in and it's ready to go. And these connect just like this. You see the pins, the female pins on the connected board match up with the pins on the Node MCU. Just make sure that the USB port is aligned with the power port like this. Insert them together and just gently press down. And that's all there is to it. Here's my power adapter. I plug it in and you'll see a brief blink of the blue light there that's indicating that it's searching for Wi-Fi and then it stops and now it's connected to my Wi-Fi network. It's one of these DC power plug splitters. This basically takes one DC power plug and converts it into two. So here's my 12 volts power, plug that into here. And now I can power both of my connected panels with the same power supply. Almost all alarm systems sirens work on 12 volts DC and that's exactly the power supply that comes with your connected panel is 12 volts DC and then there's a switch inside the circuitry of the board that when smart things or home assistant says turn on the siren it will activate that power so the 12 volt siren is powered from the same power supply that you're using to power the connected panel and again you just have to make sure that there's enough power this 
strobe light here uses about 300 milliamps. Most household alarm system sirens use between 500 and 1000 milliamps. The switch inside here is rated to up to 1.4 amps. So you'll have enough power to power most, um, even the high powered sirens that could come with your house. We have a dedicated connection for alarm minus and alarm plus at the bottom on these black screw terminals here. The red wire goes to plus and the black wire goes to minus. So let's try that out. And the red. Okay, those are in there securely. Let's plug it in. Now, to show that the siren works, I can turn it on with my phone. And there we go, you see the strobe lights flashing. And the, uh, there's a little red LED indicator on the board, I don't know if it's a little bit hard for you to see, but that comes on indicating that the siren is switched on. And just tap it again to turn it off. Now, you're not just limited to your alarm system siren or a strobe light because there are lots of things that operate on 12 volts DC that connected can switch on and off. For example, these LED light strips that I bought on Amazon for about $8 operate on 12 volts DC. So let's see if we can switch them on and off with connected. These light strips come in a spool with a DC power plug at one end already connected. But what's great about these is they have an adhesive backing and you can cut them to size. Um, so right now it's just a demonstration. I'm gonna leave them mostly in the spool and show you how I can connect these to the connected board. And for this, I'm going to use a DC power plug pigtail. Um, and this just makes it easy to make that connection just like that. So again, red to plus and black to minus. Okay, so now we should be able to switch on the LED strips with our connected device. And there it goes. Really cool. Now one thing to keep in mind, I did say that the output here is rated for 1.4 amps. This full LED strip uses about two amps of power. So while it still does work because there is enough power from this power supply, um, going over that 1.4 amps will generate a little bit of heat and eventually uh, that will probably burn out the switch inside the alarm panel. So make sure that you, um, it's okay for a minute or two, but make sure that you stay within that 1.4 amp range. And with these LED LED strips, uh, you can reduce the power by simply cutting them to length. In the connected smart app in SmartThings, I have the alarm out set up as a siren or a strobe, but I can tap here and change this to a beep blink switch, hit save, and then save again, go back to my home, and go to my test alarm. And now when I press it, it should do a little blink. There we go, isn't that cool? See if you can make sure you guys can see that in the background. Uh, so a lot of flexibility here. Um, you can set it up any way that you want. Now I can also customize the number of blinks. For example, in the, in the beep blink device handler, it defaults to three blinks as you saw, but I can have it repeat say tap here and put it in 10 times, hit save, let's wait a second for the device to refresh, and let's try that. Now I want to show you the companion board, which is the connected alarm panel add-on board, which does not have the built-in 12 volt output, but instead it does have these pins and a single low voltage output for you to switch a higher voltage device using a relay or a low voltage device like a PZO buzzer to make a beep beep sound. And I'm going to show you some details now on how that works. Now the most common use case 
for the output using these pins is to power a PZO buzzer, and that's to make the beep beep sound that you're used to when your door opens or closes um, from your old alarm system. Now these little electromagnetic buzzers are very small, and but they do make a quite a good noise. So let me show you how to hook that up using the, the convenient pins here uh, and a couple of jumper wires. The pins here on the side are labeled 5 volts, ground, and out. And for the low voltage 3 volt buzzer, we need, all we need to do is connect two wires, the out and the ground, and then we can activate the buzzer. So plus is going to go to out, which was orange, and yellow was ground, so that's going to go to the ground. There we go, I've got my buzzer connected. Now I've set up this device in my app as a beep blink switch, so you'll hear as soon as I tap this, there's the beep sound from the PZO buzzer. Now, you can also use the pins on this add-on board to power an external relay module like this one. Now, this is a 5-volt uh, high-level trigger relay module. I sell these in my online store. Um, and you can use a relay module to power, to switch on and off any electrical device, even if it's a different voltage than the voltage that's being powered by this. Uh, so. Common cases for the relay module, for example, a garage door opener, that's to make a momentary contact between uh, two switch points, or to switch on things uh, like a sprinkler controller, um, a fountain, a light, um, LEDs that operate at different voltages, such as 5 volts. As long as you have a separate power supply, uh, you can use the relay module to do that. And I've designed this with the three pins here to make this very trivial to hook up. I can't really push these on here. back in. Now let's set this up in the app. I'm going to go to automation and then connected and then go to my test add-on board. Tap next. Scroll down and I'm going to just make this a switch and then hit save. Great, so wait a second for that to refresh. So now when I tap the switch on my phone, we'll see the relay and click over and activate. You might have been able to hear it there. There's a little LED indicator on the left side that the relay is activating and you can see the blue light on the on the Wi-Fi module that it's receiving that signal. So to summarize, some of these improve hardware improvements make it a lot easier for you to connect all of your devices. Um, the main connected alarm panel that supports a 12 volt siren or strobe and the connected add-on board that's a little bit more flexible because you have the switch the pins to switch a, a relay module or a PZO buzzer. Uh, now your kits are going to come with one alarm panel board and then the remainder of the boards will be these add-on modules and that's because most homes just have one 12 volt siren and then you can use the the remaining ones for your pzo buzzer or other devices so if you've ordered a six zone kit you'll get one of these if you've ordered a 12 zone kit you'll get one of these and one of these and if you've ordered a 18 zone kit you'll get one of these and two of these now if you want to switch, mix and match, um, if you have two sirens for example, or if you had a siren and a strobe, or you wanted to do a thing with the 12 volt um, LED strips, uh, just let me know and I can sw swap them out for you. Just send us an email with your order number. All right, well that's about all I had for you today. Um, happy to share more information. If you have questions, please post those in the comments below. I'm gonna put links to all the products that I've demonstrated today in the comments below as well. Um, again, this is the connected alarm panel add-on board and the connected alarm panel board with the built-in siren output. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback. Thanks.